Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. I thought today I would talk about three mystery books that I've read relatively recently within the last couple of months that are all on the lighter, funner side. I love reading mystery books and I love you know, darker thrillers and things like that. But sometimes you need something a little lighter, a little fun, something kind of silly. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And I've been enjoying sort of my foray into that side of the mystery world. I've read like Agatha Christie's and Sherlock Holmes, and there is some lightheartedness to those types of books. But I've been enjoying finding other types of modern mysteries that also have some sort of lightness to them. The ones I'm going to talk about today are all light in very different ways. So depending on what your personal preference is when it comes to mysteries or the way that you read like lighter mysteries, um, I think there'll be something here for you. The first book that I have is Death by Dumpling by Vivian Chan. This is your basic cozy mystery, but I feel like this one has a little bit more depth to it than the standard cozy mystery. As you could tell by like the title and things like that, like they're not afraid of puns and they're not afraid to have fun. But I think the mystery itself is really compelling and it doesn't get like too punny or too light, which is a thing that I always have a little bit of a hard time with when it comes to cozy mysteries, like finding ones that have the right balance of the lightness and the coziness uh, without getting too far into that realm. So in this story, you are following this character named Lana Lee. She's in her late 20s and she recently quit her job and has gone back to working at her family's Chinese restaurant. And then one day, the owner of the plaza that the Chinese restaurant is in ends up dead uh, immediately after or pretty soon after ordering dumplings from the restaurant. Now the person who ends up dead is allergic to shellfish and he orders pork dumplings from them but he somehow ends up with shrimp dumplings and so obviously an investigation occurs into his death and Lana starts looking into it kind of separately from the police and she starts to realize that there is a lot more happening in this plaza than she might have originally realized. It's the first in a series and I already have the second book on hold at my library so that tells you how much I really enjoyed this one. It's really fun and funny. There's a lot of like poking at Lana's love life which is a thing that I just found amusing. It's one of those things where it's very standard like Asian aunties being overly nosy and being really like particular about uh, pushing their you know family members to like get married already and things like that which I can relate. And Lana is obviously not a professional detective by any means and so a lot of this is just her like poking around in other people's business and trying to find out as much as she can without uh, getting in trouble or people getting suspicious of her and things like that. She has a really great best friend which I really enjoy as well. There is a little bit of a romance in this one so if that's a thing you are into or not just know that that's there. I feel like they're not that heavy-handed with it but it is in the book. But yeah, if you enjoy straight up cozy mysteries or you've been like looking for a cozy mystery to try because you want to explore the genre, I think that Death by Dumpling would be a really great one to read. Another one that I read back in November, I think it was November or maybe December, um, is Hashtag Fashion Victim by, by Amina Akar. This one is kind of like a satire. So it has like this dark comedy edge to it. The way that this book is pitched is basically The Devil Wears Prada meets American Psycho with a little bit of the Heathers thrown into it. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, then I feel like you'd enjoy this book. But you are following this character named Anna St. Clair, who's basically a sociopath. And she becomes really obsessed with her co-worker, Sarah Taft. They work at this fashion magazine, kind of like Vogue or something along those lines. And they find out that they're both up for the same promotion. And so Anna St. Clair is simultaneously trying to become Sarah Taft's best friend and also simultaneously like in competition with her for this promotion. And they basically become like frenemies. And it's just like a really fun, really over the top sort of story. I will say that the writing takes a little bit to get used to. They talk in this very like stereotypically valley girl, high fashion, ditzy sort of way. But this story also has like these really dark undercurrents to it, which I feel like balance out. It's sort of like watching Jane the Virgin too, uh, the way that the telenovela side and all of the serial killer stuff on Jane the Virgin, that sort of like darkness and edge with 
the over the topness is very comparable to this one as well. But if you are someone who enjoys that sort of over the top murder style, that's a really weird sentence, but I think you know what I mean. <laughs> then I think that you would enjoy hashtag fashion victim. All right. And then the next one that I have is basically like two books by the same author. The one that I read recently is the Satapura Moonstone by Sujata Masi. This one doesn't come out until like May. So I just got an advanced copy of it. But the one that you can read is The Widows of Malabar Hill, which came out last January and I think is like coming out in paperback relatively soon. These are historical mysteries and I think that historical mysteries are really great if you want lighter mysteries but don't want to go quite to the cozy end of things. So these take place in the 1920s in India and you are following this character named Praveen who is one of the first lawyers in Mumbai. In this book she ends up getting high hired by the local government to, to look into the royal family. Um, there have been some recent deaths and the royal family is unsure what to do with one of their sons, whether to send them abroad to schooling or keep them in the palace and have them homeschooled. But as Praveen is looking into sort of the family, she realizes that some of the deaths that have occurred may have been slightly more suspicious than was originally reported. So yeah, this is probably like the most dark, I guess, in terms of the three that I've talked about here, but it's not even like that dark. So it's all like, you know, relative. But I really, really enjoy these books a lot. Um, I think that Sujata Masi does a great job of like covering the historical side as well as covering the mystery side of things. These are basically like comfort reads for me now. Every time there's going to be a new one out, I'm going to pick them up. I'm kind of upset that I'm like already this far out of the game. <laughs> But that's okay. Uh, I can't really complain about getting an advanced copy and then reading it. I highly recommend these mysteries if you enjoy historical mysteries, if you haven't checked them out already. Um, like I said, The Widows of Malabar Hill is already out, but The Set to Form Moonstone will be coming out later this year. So yeah, that's everything that I have for this video. Let me know down below some of your favorite mysteries that are on the lighter side of things wherever it falls on the spectrum of lighter mystery books, whether it's historical mysteries, cozy mysteries, whatever you want. Um, or if you read one of these books and you want to talk about it down below or have any questions about them, you can feel free to obviously leave that down in the comments as well. Otherwise, I will see you guys again next week. Bye.